the tow hook undercling v8 you're watching jaybird tv hey everyone and welcome to another episode uh, first off the bat i'm sorry it's a little later than normal my life has been super busy with wedding planning school work editing training and all of that really good stuff but enough excuses i will try and get back to my regular schedule and maybe even up it just a little bit anyhow let's jump into this first route this blue v4 v5 very fun crimpy technical kind of reach out left there get some high feet and do a very cool mantle and you kind of press with your fingers um, instead of turning it around to get your palm on there which i thought was very cool reach up get that right hand and then left hand very cool gaston move get the high foot and then i actually want to get my right where my left is in order to then get my left hand out Get that left hand up one more time. Get a high foot here. And this actually felt a little desperate. A little more dynamic than the rest of the route. And boom, topping that out. So first route down. And hey, I gotta give a big shout out to my man, Alex McKee. Commented and said he's been six months into climbing and he's already sending V7. That is so awesome, my man. Congratulations. I'm really glad that you've been able to get some technique out of my videos. It's definitely something that I worked on for a number of years and hope to keep honing it. So congrats, my man. Anyhow, we're looking at this gold hold V6, V7. So it starts on the left side there with one of those big moons and you have your feet kind of spread out and down low. And there is a small yellow hold on that feature that you're able to crimp. I'm unsure of what to do on this first go. So I'm trying to work my way out right but it's very difficult. That hold on the feature is small, so you can't really pull on it to keep shifting your weight over right. So there is an alternative beta that works. Get set once more. And I noticed there is a pretty solid foot chip where I get my left and I can now reach over with my left hand. And this move is very cool really far reaching over there and you almost get parallel with the ground and then kind of walk your feet over which just feels so cool really awesome move there hit the next moon as a guest on and get your foot up high and it might be a little difficult to see but they've taken crimps and they've screwed them on towards the future the feature there so you can't really use them they actually block the corner so you can't crimp that what that forces you to do is to just use the feature as kind of a sloper. And from there, you have to go up left. And they made that next move really precise because they guarded it by putting two crimps, both of their edges facing in. So it's kind of a slot. So once again, I do that parallel move, just so rad, and get up to this point. I was much closer, but I was unable to really get my hand in there. Also, the footage got a little blurry here, and I actually didn't know why, but it turns out that chalk was getting on the lens of my camera, which makes a lot of sense. I'm in a climbing gym, and my hands are really super chalky. So, kind of learned that through this video, and now I just wipe the lens off, and it's crystal clear. I tried to sharpen it up in my editing software, but I apologize if it's not the best quality. But anyhow, this time I'm able to keep my weight so a little more secure and actually hit that kind of guarded crimp. Walk the right foot up here to get the left up. A pretty delicate move. I wasn't sure to cross or match and I go for the safer option and match it. And then the foot is good enough to move your weight out. Pinch one of those two really cool looking yellow pinches. Get that right hand on and top that out. Super cool move. I love that one where you're parallel to the ground couldn't break the beta and it's just a really creative set so that's pretty awesome next up getting on this blue slopey v4 v5 really fun in the corner here i love when they have those moves that you almost feel like you're doing in slow motion you'll see there's one of those so my man slopesy was asking me how long are my sessions and how many days in a row do i typically climb now, it changes all the time. When I'm in my climbing circuit training, I try and climb as much as possible. So I typically will do three days on, 
one day off, three days on. Always listening to my body. So if I feel like I need an extra rest day, I'm definitely taking that. When life gets really busy, I'll take rest days as necessary. And I think that as long as you're keeping up on your nutrition, it's not going to affect you all that much. Just if you wanna make those really big gains, it's just good to be getting on the wall as much as possible. Now for how long my sessions are, they're typically about two hours. I do about 20 to 30 minutes of warming up. That just helps me to feel much stronger and to prevent any injury. Then I climb for about an hour to an hour and a half, kind of varies. And then I do training for about 30 minutes and that includes antagonist. If I am doing any campusing or hangboarding, which when I'm training to go outdoors and send projects, which I'm just getting into that season, let's go. I will campus and hangboard right after I warm up and before I climb. And believe it or not, it actually usually makes me feel quite a lot stronger. So I don't really notice it affecting my climbing, except for that I feel really strong actually. So pretty cool stuff. Anyhow, I did get the whole down climb on the V4, V5 here, so I thought I'd leave that in. It's pretty interesting. And we're gonna be moving on to the next route, which is this uh, really awesome V6, V7 green holds. Just powerful, slopey, and on the overhanging prow, which one of my favorite sections of the wall. I love those overhanging routes that rely on a lot of power. This one's pretty rad. You kind of start down low and then hit a really awesome pinch undercling. You have two crimps there. And I just kind of skip one and reach up left. And then I wanted to um, kind of cross over, but it was much easier to just match. So I did so and go out left. And it's pretty much done from here. Just kind of cruising through that. This is definitely my style. I love just powerful moves like this. Anything slopey just feels great. And I appreciate the feedback from Tima H090 asking me to put the color back on the grades when they pop up and tell you what grade it is. So if it's V4, V5 and it's blue, the text is blue. He's just telling me that's a little easier to follow along. And I know that sometimes it can be kind of a little fast paced when I'm showing things. So I definitely appreciate that feedback and I'll be doing that. So thanks again for commenting and letting me know. Really appreciate that. So this one's fun and bouncy. Do a move up right and then get some high feet here. Kind of hit these little slopey, crimpy holds. Um, they're great to use on this section of the wall because it is slab. Do get quite a high foot here and then reach up right and match that, which feels pretty cool. Really engages the lat in the back. And then carefully stand up here. Go out left to a pretty slopey hold with a good in cut on it. Get a foot out left and I drop the right leg to match it and keep my weight kind of low to then go out to finish. So another cool route. It reminded me of the night and day difference V6, which I climbed in a previous episode if you're able to catch that. Really fun climb, super beta intensive, which I always really appreciate. So next up is the toe hook undercling V8. Those black holds there, you can see it definitely gets a little interesting right in this section. So starts down low and someone gifted me the beta of getting a, a knee bar right in the beginning, which makes this pretty sweet. So then you can go up right to a crimp and then you move to a undercling on that feature there. Get your foot up, you can match that. And then you hit a hold that is so cool because it's a little crimp for your four fingers on your right hand and then you get your thumb on the feature and pinch it. Get a pretty solid undercling out left. Then you have to get a toe hook set and go up right and you actually turn your hand in in order to hit the undercling. The way that it's angled, you can't just go straight up with your pinky at the top of the hold, you actually have to turn it around, which I've never done a move like that, but that was super cool. The toe hook beta felt very challenging for me, so I try and just flag my left out and get my right on the little foot chip. The foot chip is quite slopey and it really is difficult to use. It's just there to kind of secure your toe hook. But it's just really interesting because your left hand is on pulling down, your right isn't doing all that much, and then you have to do a big move upright with your hand turned in. So it's just an incredible amount of body tension. 
definitely felt challenging for me. You can see I'm getting a bit closer, but still pushing me to my limit. I'm not the best at toe hooking either, so definitely provides a challenge for me. But just in the start here, get that right hand up, left of the undercling, walk my foot up. And what's interesting is if I tried to close the crimp and take my thumb off the right hand, it actually was worse, so I had to pinch that. Get the toe hook set, and I'm able to stick it for the first time. It felt pretty awesome. Then you go up left, and then make yet another move off of the toe hook. And then my left foot popped, and I just couldn't keep my weight in, so totally shocked. That was the first time I'd gotten through the crux from the start. But now I'm pretty excited. I know that it's possible for me. And I'm just cruising right back up here, so hit the left. Side pull undercling, get the left foot out, get that right toe hook set. And you'll notice that I'm actually matching the top of the hold as well, which helps. Before I was trying to match the bottom, but I'm just a little bit closer when I match the top. All right, and here we go from the beginning once more. These beginning moves are starting to feel very comfortable for me. A lot of attempts on those. Hit the left hand. Get that toe set. I'm able to stick the first move. Get my left on, hit the right, and I'm taking no chances. I'm crimping my brains out. Hit that left hand, nice dynamic move to a really positive sloper. Thankfully, the ending is not too bad. And I'm able to get a top. I felt really good. It was a few days and a lot of attempts on this. Definitely had to get the muscle memory, had to learn all those small intricacies, and was able to, uh, to get the send on that. And the last route of this episode is a V4, V5 balancey on the flat wall there. A key part of this is that that arete is not on. You're not supposed to use the arete. But moving up to that first sloper, you match on it and lean back to get your left foot up. And then you stand up from here. So you push, do a bit of a pistol squat there, and you're just pushing on that top sloper as well. It's really tempting to reach that left hand out and grab the arete because you don't really have a handhold. But of course, you've gotta follow the, uh, the route as is. So I kind of use that uh, foot chip out there, it's just an intermediate. This time I'm really focusing on keeping my weight in and close to the wall. Get that foot up, and then you grab the bottom of that and use that to stand up, which I thought was actually very cool. Did not feel that positive, but it's enough. Get that right foot out, do a very slow and controlled crossover. Hit that crimp. And then just that one last sloper to go. So you hit that, use the bottom sloper as a foot, which is a little daunting, doesn't feel the best. But you go out and uh, hit the finishing crimp, which is bomber, thank goodness. And that is going to bring this episode to a wrap. So thank you so much for watching. Much love. Peace.